Hi, I'm excited and I hope you are too, because today we are going to code a lot. In this video, we will update the game by identic model, create card endpoints, add joining game part and implement WebSocket logic. Before that, let's visualize the game flow. Step 1. The first player sends an HTTP POST request with their username, let's say John, to the server to start a new game. Server creates the game and returns a game ID, which is essentially a URL to join the game. Then, the first player shares this URL with the second player. Step 3. Second player sends a HTTP POST request to the server with their username, for example Ben, to join the game. Now, with both players joined, the game begins, and the player uses WebSockets to play the game. Why use WebSockets, you may ask? Why not just send HTTP requests? So, unlike HTTP, where each request response cycle initiates a new connection, WebSockets allow to establish a persistent connection, which is reused for multiple messages. This makes it ideal for live interactions, like our game. Next, model changes. Right now, the game model looks like this, ID and two player fields. Let's enhance it. First, until second player joins the game, it will be set to none, so let's make this field nullable. Next, we'll add move number to count moves, also our board, and the winner. Then, three date times. Finished at when the game was finished, created at when the game was created, and updated at when the game was updated. Now, let's implement all these changes. First, we we'll update the model. Inside MongoDB model, we'll add created at and updated at fields. Now, in game model, we remove this base model inheritance duplicate. Next, let's update player's definition and make player 2 nullable. Then at move number, board, winner, and finish at. Now we will update views.py and move most of the logic to a separate CRUD layer. As a result, our endpoint will just call one simple function from CRUD that we will define it later. Then if the result is none, means something went wrong, we will just raise an error, and if all good, we will return the game. Next, let's create CRUD.py file and paste our logic that we had. In start new game function, our game data will contain first player username and an empty board. Then we we'll split our function into two functions. The first one we we'll run the insert function and then call get game by id. This function in turn returns the game document from MongoDB. If from db client we get none, means the game wasn't found by id, we return the same value. Now let's update our MongoDB client to return none if the game doesn't exist. Before that, we adjust our insert function to add two new fields whenever the game is created, created at and updated at. Next, we will update get function to return none if the game wasn't found by id. Now let's add list endpoint, it will call list games from db function that we will define in CRUD. Then let's add this function, that will just call list method in mongodb client. Let's define this method in db client. First, we get the collection, then our result, then we update each game in result to have a proper ID. Next, let's add an endpoint to get a game information by ID. For this, we just need to use getGameById CRUD function that we already defined. Next, delete games endpoint. It will use delete games from db CRUD function. Delete games from db will be similar to list games from db. It will just call one function from MongoDB client. In this case, delete many. Let's update our client to add this method. Inside of it, we'll just get our collection and delete all the documents from it. Now we'll check the created endpoints. For this, we'll start the server using make run command. Then I'll open the API docs in the browser. First, delete endpoint. If you click it, 8 games were deleted. Click again, now 0. Then let's create a new game. If you click execute, we get an error in crud.py. There is a typo that I will fix now. Execute it again, and you can see the new fields that we added. Next, let's get the game by game ID. Then let's get all the games. You can see two games are there. 
if we run the delete, two games were deleted. Awesome. Now we we'll implement the joining game logic. We we'll add the new endpoint. It will get the game by ID. If the game doesn't exist, we we'll raise the exception. Then we we'll check if the second player is none. If it's not, we we'll raise the exception. Then we we'll run the join new game function. If the result is none, we we'll raise the HTTP exception. In the final step, we will return the updated game. Now let's define the join new game function. As you may remember, the idea behind joining new game is to set the second player. So our game data will consist of game fields and player 2. With modified game data, we run the update game function to apply the changes on DB. Update game function will get the MongoDB client and then run update one method. Now let's define it. Inside the function, we get our collection, then add update add to our data and then run update1 function on db. Let's add missing imports. We successfully implemented the logic and now let's try it out. We run the server, get our API docs, create new game, Then join this game. If we get the game by ID, you can see that now two players' fields are set. Now we are ready for WebSockets. First, let's add WebSockets.py file that will have a connection manager that will manage our WebSockets. It will store a WebSocket information for each game. Also, it will have a connect function that will wait for WebSocket and then add it to our game's dictionary. When the WebSocket is disconnected, there is no need to store it, so we run this disconnect function to remove the WebSocket from the game's dictionary. Then, broadcast game. When the game was updated, we need to notify all the players about it, so we use this function for it. The final thing will create the connection manager instance. Then, let's add a WebSocket endpoint to views.py. First, we will wait for the WebSocket to be connected. Then, we will have a forever loop to be able to exchange multiple messages with the client. If there was a WebSocket disconnect exception, we will use the connection manager to disconnect the WebSocket. After this, we will wait for WebSocket to send us data. In our case, we are waiting for the move data. Having the move data, we first get the latest game object from database. Then, we will add a comment to add validation that we will implement a bit later. Then, we will make the move. For this, we will get the column and then run make move function. Once we made the move, we should update the game in database. In the last step, we will notify everyone about the changes. Now let's implement the make move function. We will define it in the shortcuts.py file. Since we only have a column, but we need also a row to be able to update the board, we will run the calculate row by call function to get the row. Next, using move number field, we figure out whose move it is, player 1 or player 2. Then we will update our board and increment move number. After this, we'll check if there is a winner. If the winner exists, we'll mark it and also set a winner and finish add fields. If there's no winner, but at the same time no more moves are available, mean it's a draw. In this case, we set winner to none and update finish add field. Now let's define calculate row by call function in core.py. First, we check if the column is in bounds. Then we'll go from bottom to top, and if the cell is empty, we'll return the row, as it is the only available row to make a move in this column. If no cells are empty in this column, we will return none. Next, let's cover this logic with tests. For this, we will define a board and add test cases using parameterize. There will be a test case for each column. If you run the test using make test, everything is green. Amazing. Next thing, let's update our use.py. As we now have a connection manager, let's update the joining game logic and notify the first player whenever the second player joins the game. Alright, now we already have a working code, but we left one thing. It's our validation. For now, we assume the players will always provide the correct data and there will be no problems, but this is not very realistic, so let's add validation. 
First, you'll go to models.py and add move input model. It will contain information about the move, the player who made the move, and the column of the move. Besides, let's add get model save function that will validate the model, and if you get validation error, we will return none. Now back to views. Let's use the model we just defined. Next, validation. We have a function called validate that will validate the game and the move. If there will be some problems, it will return an error message. We will then log it into the console. Let's add validators file and validate function. It will have two functions, validate game and validate move. If any of them raises custom error, we return the error message. If all good, we return none. Now let's define this custom error exception. Custom error will be a base class for our custom exceptions. Then we add a couple of exceptions. First, when the game was not found. Then, if not all players join the game. Then, if the game is already finished. If the move not valid. And if it's wrong player to move. Let's use them in our validator.py file. In validate game, we'll check if the game is not none, if the second player is set, and if the game is not finished. If any of these conditions are true, we'll raise a corresponding exception. In validate move, we check if the move is not none, if the player in the move is indeed the player that should move now. For this, we'll use this next player to move username property that we'll define a bit later. And last but not least, if the move is valid. Now, let's go to models.py and define two new properties. First, next player to move username. For this, we will use the move number field to determine whose turn it is, player 1 or player 2, and then we we'll return the player username. Then, next player to move sign, the logic is similar, we just now return the player in num value. As you may remember, we already defined next player to move sign logic in shortcuts.py, so let's update it. Alright, that is all for the code, now let's simulate the gameplay. I run the server and then open API docs in the browser and Postman. Let's now create the game and join it. The first player will be named 1, the second player will be named 2. Let's now connect to the WebSocket endpoint. When you click connect, there is a connection open message in the terminal. Now let's connect the second player. Let's make a move. We set the column as 3 and the player as name 1, our first player. If we click send, you can see that we sent the move data and got the game data back. If we go to the end, you can see that the last row in the board was updated. What's important is that the second player also got the update, because we use this broadcast game function. Now let's make a move with the second player. And now the first player also got the update. And you can see that the port was updated. If you make a couple of more moves, it is clear that the board is updated correctly. Now let's try to send another move with the second player, and you can see that our validation is working and we got one player to move message. If you set a wrong column, means the move is not valid, we get a corresponding message. We simulated that the first player wins this game. Let's check how the board looks like now. You can see that the board was updated, and now the winning line of once has three. Also, winner and finish at fields were set. If any of the players make a move now, we'll get the game finished error. Let's check how the game looks like in the API docs. The same data is in Postman, of a board, winner and finish at. Alright, that is all folks. 
we've level up our game by updating the game model, adding crafting points and implementing joining game logic and web sockets. I know, it's been a lot of code and information. If anything seems confusing, don't hesitate to hit that pause button and play with the implementation a bit. And hey, if there still will be issues, feel free to drop a comment on this video. Thanks a lot for watching this. See you in the next video. Until then, keep coding and have a fantastic day. Bye!